Okay, I'm going to walk you through a quick RethinkDB CRUD example using Node.js. I'm going to start by cloning the tutorial from GitHub, and then I'm going to run Docker Compose up. While that's starting, I'll go ahead and open the code in Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code. So show the Docker Compose file really quick. So we have two containers running. One is the latest RethinkDB, and one is the latest node. And we're mapping our local source app folder to user source app in the node container and running npm start. Let's look at the source code real quick. So like I said, this is a Node.js app. Uh, it's an express app. I'll just walk through this code really quick when that app first starts up. The first thing we do is we try to connect to RethinkDB. And the configuration is stored in this config file .rethinkdb. I'll look at that real quick. So our host, uh, our RethinkDB host is just called DB. Now that name maps to the name in the Docker Compose file. So that is this. So if this was called something different, you would change your config to point to that. The port is the typical port that you use to connect to RethinkDB. And the database name that we're interested in is called game. Now we're going to create that database if it doesn't exist. So after we connect to RethinkDB, the first thing we do is we call this create database method on the database controller. I'll jump to that real quick. The database controller, it's a very simple method. We, we get the list of databases from RethinkDB. And if we find one that matches, then we do nothing. If we do not find one that matches, then we go ahead and create the database. And you do that simply by calling r.db create, pass in the database name, and then <clears throat> call run with the RethinkDB connection. Now we do the same exact thing with a table, uh, a table called games. And you see this code is almost identical. The difference is we're calling table list and we're calling create table or table create. So you'll see here, after we create the database, we create the table. So we're using uh, EJS template engine. So we do some setup here. Um, we have basically four uh, endpoints that can be requested inside the browser. Uh, there's the index, that'll just, the index uh, at slash. So what we'll do there is we'll call the game controller, we'll get the list of games and then we'll render the index view. Uh, so let's look at the game controller real quick. So this JavaScript file is in charge of uh, getting games, creating games, updating games, and deleting games. And you'll see these methods are pretty straightforward. So to get a list of games, we just call r.tablegames.run. That'll get us all of the games. Uh, that function returns a cursor uh, which has a to array method on it, which actually returns a promise. And I'll show you back in server.js how we're handling that. Um, get game by ID looks at the query string in the request and then just calls the get ID method. So this also returns a promise. Um, this method will return uh, a, a game object. Uh, create game. We look at the body that was passed in to create uh, a game object, and then we just call the insert method on r.table. Update game is almost identical. We first get the ID of the game we want to update, then we call update, and finally delete a game. We get to delete a game, we get the ID, and then call delete. So if we go back to server.js. Um, so as I mentioned, the request for slash will call that get games uh, and render index. So let's let's look at index real quick. So we're creating a very simple, super ugly HTML table where we're just looping through the games and showing player one, player two, and a status. And then we have a link to update the game, and at the bottom we have a link to go create the game. The create page is a simple form where you can type in a player one, a player two, select a status, and then hit submit. 
and then the update page is almost identical to the create page. You have the same exact form, only we're pre-populating with the values of the game you selected. But at the bottom, we also have a delete button, so you can delete the game. So the form actions, slash delete, slash update, and on the create page, slash create, those are also mapped in server.js. So as you can see right here, those are all post operations. And obviously, slash create calls game controller dot create game, and then redirects back to the home page. Uh, slash update calls update game, redirects, redirects back to the home page, and delete calls up delete game and redirects back to the home page. So let's look at the app. So this is the home page. So obviously there are no games yet because we haven't created any games. If I go to my rethink DB data explorer, I can also see that there are no games. So let's go ahead and create a game. So we'll say player one is Dan, player two is Brian, and the game is ready. So I submitted and you can see in this ugly HTML form that uh, we have a game now. And if I go to RethinkDB, you can see that we have a game here with an ID, player one, player two, and a status. And I can go add a couple other games. So, John, Sally, started. You get the picture. Uh, as I mentioned, you can update a game. So, I can go say that Dan and Brian's game has finished. I can update that. You can see the update there. And if I go to Rethink DB, we can see our two games and we can see that Dan and Brian game is finished. And I can go delete a game. Delete. You can see the game is gone. 